All right, hello. It is uh, January 29th, 2020, and this will be my first YouTube video of the year, and I'm glad to be back. It's been a long time since I made a video, um, so I'm just glad to be doing it again. I just want to thank everyone who's made your comments and uh, messaged me and all your likes. I just really appreciate your guys' feedback. It um, inspires me to keep going and keep doing these videos, so I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, and thanks for letting me know how it helps you. Okay, so today we're going to do another landscape, and um, we're going to be using parts of this picture. There's some elements in this picture that I enjoy that I want to bring out, but there's some things I want to change about it. So that's kind of our reference picture for today's, um, today's event. Um, I chose a snowy scene because I just haven't demonstrated uh, a snowy scene yet. So I figured you guys would enjoy that. Um, so that's the reference picture. This is my support here. I'm using pastel mat. Um, it's my favorite paper. This is about a 12 by 16 size of pastel mat. And uh, the packaging looks like this. If you're not familiar with pastel mat, you can find it on Amazon um, or dickblick.com. We'll carry it. This is their 12 by 16 pad. You get 12 sheets and it comes with these glassine inserts. This is glassine paper. And so it's really nice because the glassine helps protect the artwork when it's all done. I can actually store it this way. Um, and it's about 60 to $65 for a pad of 12 pieces of paper. Um, so it's a little spendy, but it's really good quality and it's my favorite paper. All right, so we're using the pastel mat here. Um, and then we're going to start off this painting um, with my um, Prismacolor New Pastels. I really enjoy working with these. I've gotten really good with, and, um, really good with them, really confident with them, and uh, I just enjoy using them. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start off with these. And um, let's look at the picture again. Let's talk about this. Um, Got a little pointer here. Okay, so nice snowy scene. Let's see things I like about it. So I do like the overall composition. Like I like this, this little snowy road. It kind of goes down the middle here of this um, scene. Maybe it's off to the left a little bit. You got this cool little fence and you got another side of the road coming this way. And you got this nice big tree you see that there and these other trees that kind of lead you down the scene um, what i like about the trees and i don't know if you can really tell the picture is hard to pick out some of the details but there is light that's filtering through and hitting parts of the trunk um, you can kind of see it back in here it's very subtle but you can definitely see some how the light kind of filters through the foliage and hits parts of the tree trunk and leaves other parts dark so that's one aspect I want to bring out. The other aspect I like is I like the overall lighting, um, especially in the background. The, the background lighting is really attractive. It's got this nice warm, kind of warm snowy glow to it. Um, you can kind of see with the cooler foreground here. So this contrast, this warm and cool contrast, that's always fun to recreate. And of course we will exaggerate those colors in the painting. And then, um, so I like the brightness of the, the back part of the scene and how that comes forward and then it's cooled off here by the front. And over here we just have this mass of foliage or trees or something. It's just, it's just kind of this huge thing. I'm going to remove this. I'm not going to um, recreate that in the painting because it just won't, it won't really work well in the painting. It's just going to be too much of a wall, too much of a blob. Um, and it's just not going to really make a lot of sense. Um, I do like this little cricket tree, so we'll probably leave that element there. But uh, this is going to change. I'm not really sure what I'm going to put in its place. I'm thinking some sort of building maybe, maybe like a little house, a barn, a little shack or a hut or, or something over here that gives a little interest um, that actually will, will make sense in the painting. So. Anyways, uh, that's what we're going to try to do here. Um, so we're going to use a little bit of the reference photo and a little bit of an imagination here to try to get a complete scene. 
And like I said, this is a nice wintry, snowy scene. And it's not, um, I haven't done a demonstration on snow yet. So I figured this would be a good video for that. Okay. All right. So let's get started. Um, let's see. First thing I always like to do is I like to just study the picture a little bit. I like to pick out the colors and then uh, just start working. So let's definitely pick out some colors here that we know that we are going to use. And um, so we've got a lavender. That's a good color for snow that's in shade. Let's bring out some light grays. There's a white, not sure if we'll use the white. Another gray. Here is a blue, good dark color. We'll bring out a uh, brown to help with that. Um, and we've got sky blue, nice uh, color for sky. Um, there's that lavender again, it's basically the same here. And then let's see, now I'm running out of grays. I need to go back to the art store and get some more grays. I've used a lot of my um, grays here. So I'm missing kind of like a darker mid-tone grain uh, gray. Um, let's see, we do have some pinks I'm gonna put into the painting and maybe even some yellows to help with that light. Um, maybe a stronger pink, we'll see. Kind of guessing on the exact color palette I'm going for, but um, I think we can make it work. And then um, maybe an ochre to help with some of the lighting, <coughs> some of the tree, <coughs> excuse me, some of the details on the bark of the tree. Maybe some of those colors there will help with that. All right, um, let's see what else. So let's get started there. I think that's a good start here. We're just gonna pick up this gray here. This is a very light gray. It's so light, you can probably barely even see it. But uh, we're gonna just start sketching in the scene with this gray stick here. So these are new pastels. So this is a hard pastel. These aren't oils. So this is a nice hard oil past, uh, pastel set by Prismacolor. I really like these new pastels. Um, they're just really easy to, uh, to work with. Um, and they're relatively inexpensive. I think these sticks open stock are just a little bit over a dollar each. So um, you can get a lot of color and do a lot of this work here, the initial work with these quite a bit. So let's go ahead and etch in this scene here. Let's look at it again and, and kind of figure out where we want things to be. So we have this road here, this little snowy road, and it's anchored by a fence and trees on the left side. And on the right side, it's anchored by this little snowy bank here and a little bit more of that fence. So we have these lines here, if you can see how that looks these perspective lines that bring us, the viewer, into the scene. And that's really important to get that in. So kind of look at the angle of this and try to recreate that angle that you see here. You can see how sharp that is. So it goes something like this. And then the end of that road, where it ends, I think I'm gonna put about right there, maybe a little lower, actually. I think I'm gonna go a little lower, maybe about right there. All right, and then these lines here then come down the scene. So that's basically where the fence is kind of going to be a little bit. Um, and then on the other side here, maybe something like that. All right, so I'm just kind of making these marks to just kind of help me with figuring out where that... Um, where the road is actually going to sit and how it's going to look a little bit. All right, so those lines there, let's just kind of get those in. All right. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and just take the rest of this gray and we'll just cover the paper with it. So I like to use grays in the beginning to kind of just etch it out kind of figure the first elements of it and kind of figure out where things are going to be. I find the gray is very neutral. It allows me to go dark or light. Um, and it's just easier 
to get through the painting uh, for me anyways doing it this way all right so now we have the road so let's go ahead and put in this tree here you can see this tree is going to be a important element you can see how it's leaning a little bit it's got these gnarly little branches there at the top but that's our uh, foreground tree here so that comes right here right about here and it kind of leans kind of goes up and it leans up like this something like that Okay, and then um, got these branches here at the top that kind of kind of wave around all over the place. Um, one of them kind of comes up pretty big across that, and then another one comes down, kind of comes down into the scene. Okay, so you can just kind of make that how you want it to make. Um, you don't have to follow the picture exactly. You can see what I'm going for. You can see how these branches are kind of twisting around and stuff. I'm trying to indicate that up there. Um, so yeah, just uh, make that your own. Make it how you want. Maybe I'll do another little branch that kind of comes out like that. Something like that. There we go. Yeah, it's a basic tree, right? All right, so we have these other trees here, and we're gonna follow this line that you can see here, this this imaginary line here that the fence follows. We're gonna try to be mindful of that as we put in these remaining trees. So that line there. So the next tree here is uh, just gonna go straight up, more or less, <laughs> something like that. And then we have another one back here and maybe even another one back there, okay? Just an idea where those trees are gonna be. You can see it follows that line. All right, we'll do the fence here in a second. Um, over here, we are going to put an indication of something here. Maybe, um, maybe we'll add a little tree right here, all right? Something like that or house building whatever is going to be over in this side over there okay all right now i'm going to switch i'm going to get rid of this gray here for a second make sure we'll put it right there and i gotta just make sure that when i do this that the uh, camera stays on my work it's really important because when i watch these later kind of all over the place <clears throat> all right let's take a um let's take a blue let's take this dark blue here kind of a Prussian or sapphire blue. I use this um, for a good dark here in the beginning. We're just gonna go over the tree somewhat, bring that out. And just kind of follow the lines I made before, more or less. And we'll use it here for this tree and those slightly and then um, we have this cool little fence here so the fence is going to come up about right here let's draw a little line for that and then um, it's got this little post right about there all right and then uh, let's go ahead and put in the remaining parts of the fence so we have another rail here and another rail here. And just kind of get that in a little bit. And I could add a fourth one. Um, the picture shows a fourth one, but I think I might just leave it at three rails. Um, okay. And then the fence kind of goes back into the scene. Kind of comes down like that kind of just lead you back into it. So we're gonna go ahead and, actually I'm gonna change that line a little bit so it's coming down like that. A little bit more. Let's just see what that looks like. We're gonna go ahead and put in the uh, little fence post to indicate 
But this is indeed a little fence. We're gonna come behind the trees. Now this is really loose, like I'm not being exact, right? I'm not being exact to what the fence looks like. I'm just kind of indicating a fence here. Okay, so something like that. Um, and then the rails of the fence also get that in there. Okay, just tells my eye we got a fence there. And then um, over here, let's add in some darker marks here at this edge to kind of reinforce this edge as well. Um, put an indication of some shadow. Um, and then um, we're gonna match the fence opening on the other side as well. And I'm kind of just winging this part here. This is real easy though. I mean, straight lines, pretty simple shapes to recreate. Something like that. You can see how this little fence kind of has this opening here. Um, let's see, there's gonna be another post over here. So it's gonna be right there on the front part of that, and there'll be another little post right there. Okay. Maybe that little fence continues out of the scene as it uh, meets that part. So, oops, dropped it. These little sticks, see, they get really skinny. Sometimes it's hard for me to actually hold on to them. All right, so. Something like that, maybe. All right, I think that would, makes way more sense than having this blob thing here. All right, so let's add a gnarly, cool-looking tree here. So I like this. I like this tree right here. I'm gonna try to put that in here. So it kind of comes up. And it kind of curves into this scene, and it um, actually goes up a little bit more. I have this little crooked tree here. And it actually comes across. And it does this little weird growing the way it grows here. It's just kind of this interesting tree. Um, maybe a branch comes across down like that, down. continues up a little bit more too. Okay, and then we're gonna put in some more branches, but we're gonna use a different color for that. We're not gonna use this blue. We're gonna switch to a now darker gray than what I started, but it's still kind of a light gray. And we're gonna put in these branches back in here. And I'm just gonna kind of indicate lines. Oops. And I apologize that the video seems too shaky. Um, I have the, my iPhone is strapped to my chest, and so that leaves my hands, my arms free. Um, and it gives you guys a first person view, which I think is helpful. Um, so I apologize if it's uh, a distraction I'm, um, and it's moving too much. I'll try to uh, keep still. All right. Let's kind of continue with just indication of branches everywhere, just kind of distant ones. You can see I'm just just scratching in lines. And then back in here, we're going to put some distant trees back in here. This will just be some distant trees. There's a field over here. Um, so this is all a snowy field behind these trees, but there is a tree line back in there. Okay. So this is just um, just a rough sketch 
let's go back to that light gray and we're going to use the light gray for the snow oh crap dropped it again i drop these things a lot it's like i'm they're a little skinny that's the only downside to them is that i wish they were just a little fatter maybe like a jumbo size would be would be cool all right so this will be all snow you notice i'm not using white uh, the paper is white but i haven't picked up a white stick um, just using grays and as blue right now to get the scene in Just kind of cover the white with this gray. I haven't put in the little house yet, but we'll get there. Kind of figure out the sky a little bit. So I'm just taking this light gray and I'm just kind of going over everything. And just really loose um, broad strokes. That's what's cool about these new pastels is you can lay them sideways like this and cover. You can cover a lot of the paper that way. Okay. So there's that. And um, let's get some of that sky in here. So this is just a regular light blue, light blue color, sky blue here. And you can do see, you can see some of the blue sky up in here. So I like that effect. I do want to have some blue sky. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly indicate a little sky up there. And I'm just going right over these marks that I already made. All right, just get loose. Not so tight now. Just worry about covering the paper and kind of figuring out where certain things are, are going to live and be at. Pastel mat's nice because um, these marks stay where I put them. So when I take another color over it like this, you can still see those marks I laid before. And um, one of the reasons why I like pastel mat. <clears throat> all right, so let's continue. We're going to go ahead and continue with this blue all the way across here. All right. Get some of that blue and covering the paper is important. That leaves me less to cover with the oil pastels. The more I can do with the new pastels, the less I can do with the oil pastels. And I don't have to layer so much. So I'm just taking my hand and I'm just just kind of rubbing it around. All right. Now let's see if we can figure out where this little house is gonna be. I do wanna put in something like a little building. Um, let's just see, let's try this. Figure out where that house, so let's just basically draw a cube. Okay, and it's gotta match the lines here. So make sure the front of it, or it'll be the front of the house and maybe the back of the house kinda of goes back like this. And let's see where I want to be perspective wise. I want to come down or I want to come up. Let's just see, maybe I want it to be about even. So something like that. All right, and it's got this roof here. Roof kind of overhangs slightly. It's a simple little, simple little shack. All right, maybe a little chimney on that side or something. I don't know. Just a very simple shape. Try not to do too much with that. Um, and then uh, we're going to need some indication of where some windows might be. Maybe something like that. <laughs> you know, your traditional little house, right? Very simple. We'll put some stuff in front of it to kind of give it a little bit more character. 
Um, and maybe we got a little window over here. All right. All right, we'll figure how that's gonna look. It's it's gonna change, I'm sure, quite a bit, but I just needed something in there to, to, sh to tell me that I'm gonna be putting some type of little building here. Um, I'm just gonna have snow on the roof. Cover the paper. I just don't want the white to be coming through. I want to make sure that I cover that paper. Cool. All right. Now I'm going to take this blue. I'm going to bring a little bit more contrast here to the house or the shack or whatever little house here. So notice um, when I start, like it's really loose. I'm I'm using these sticks to draw with basically um, and I'm kind of just indicating things very roughly just trying to keep loose with that so this little tree comes up here a little branch branches on this tree we're just gonna reinforce those Maybe we have some branches coming from the side here. Maybe there's a tree off to the side and we have some branches coming in from the side here. Okay, and maybe there's even some foliage that kind of covers up a little part of this house here. Okay. All right, I'm going back to over here, reinforce this tree. kind of get those trees back in and I do need another little something right here I need something that brings that line down I think I'm gonna leave the fence out of it and put another little tree back in here maybe like there's actually a bunch of trees just back in there all right some more of these branches. Now I'm gonna leave some of those gray. Okay, some of them gray. All right, okay. Starting to take shape, getting a good idea where things are going to be at. And um, I'm gonna bring this blue down. I'm gonna, actually, you know what? I'm gonna use that lavender. Let's use lavender, it's better. So I like lavender for um, snow. I like lavender for a lot of things, but one of the things I like it for is indication of snow that's in shade. I use this lavender for that. Right. You can see in the picture here, we're in shade here in the foreground. And, and so you got that nice blue lavender. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and um, just use the same color here and get this entire foreground with it. All right. So it's really strong at first, right? You can just kind of rub it around. It'll, it'll knock the color back a little bit. Anytime you blend or you rub with pastels or oil pastels, it changes the value of the color and it kind of dulls it somewhat. So it's not so vibrant and doesn't pop so much. I like to do that here in the beginning just to keep things right with my eye. 
Now we do have light that's going to be coming through this scene and it's going to be hitting parts of the tree and it's going to be filtering through and it's going to be hitting parts of this tree and then maybe even some of it even hits parts of this little house but there is going to be some shaded parts so I'm going to use that lavender to kind of indicate that where my shade is I'm kind of deciding where my light come my, my lights coming from the left it's coming through so the light comes here that means there's going to be shade on the right side of things as we indicate the windows a little bit maybe underneath the roof there's a little indication of that okay let's go back to this uh, uh, not brown, this blue, and kind of get that tree in again. Don't want to lose my fence down in here. Keeping my values dark and more vibrant in the foreground. And they fade out and the color gets less vibrant as you go back into the scene okay all right now let's keep going with those darks now we got that so that was that dark blue there now we're coming in with a brown and this is kind of a darker brown okay and if you take a brown on top of a blue you can get darker which i want to do i want to get darker especially the right here in the front so you can see very early on in in there I'm, I'm thinking about values I'm not really thinking about anything else I'm just kind of composing my scene and I'm thinking about values it's the most important aspect of um, paintings is getting the values right getting the colors strength of the colors where you need them to be you see how that changes now when you add that brown on top of that blue, how, how much it changes that. Okay. So a, blue, a brown on a blue, blue on a brown, gives you a nice dark. All right. Maybe a little bit on that one. We'll leave these blue. These will be the darker ones here. indication of branches and foliage just bushes and things sticking up oops these things uh really shatter and break when you drop them they kind of fall to pieces <laughs> um, okay i think that's good all right pretty cool huh all right now let's keep going so Bring out some of these more sticks here. Let's see. Um, so I got this yellow. It's kind of a pale yellow. And uh, I'm going to use it for light. And we're going to really bring some light into this piece. So this is the uh, yellow, and it's in this back snowy field that's behind us here. Make sure we get in between the fence rails helps with that okay and it actually goes right across that part and then it continues on to the other side all right so that's a nice pale yellow don't want to rub that my hands are blue it's going to turn green so I'm just going to keep it like that um, I'm going to come down to this gray now so that was that yellow pale yellow and we're going to use a gray now to indicate some light that is coming through the trees and the fence and it comes across here maybe like that okay and there's some 
indications of it hitting the other side here as it filters through. That's going to be blue. We'll leave that alone. Okay, so just quick indication of the light coming through. Right? Maybe we'll even put a little yellow into it, give it a stronger sense of that light. See, those contrasts are, are really attractive. It's what really pulls the painting together. It's what's really attractive to the eye. All right. So you need to have high contrasts and good color contrasts in your paintings. There we go. And let's say it's even hitting this, um, this house over here. So I'm going to go ahead and put some more of this gray here to act as an uh, indication of snow. Try to keep my camera on my work here so it doesn't um, you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, so a little bit of light hits that part of the house, and maybe even some up here in the roof. Certain spots get hit. Okay, something like that. lines make sure my lines are right okay and then underneath the roof here kind of coming out like that I kind of messed up the line here I made it too horizontal and that doesn't it's not gonna match this part so I'm gonna kind of correct that All right, we'll figure that out. Something like that. All right, maybe there's even some lavender right there. And come back with that. door of the house indicate where a little door might be this little hut all right and maybe there's a little um something like a little planter box or something that's coming right here in front of it Just to give it a little bit more, you know, dimension so it's not so flat. Just a little indication of, um, you know, maybe there's a little planter box there or something. It's a little item of interest, really. Kind of just breaks the eye up, so it's not, you know, it's not such such a boring little house, I guess. All right, and maybe we'll even um, continue that on the other side. Okay. You know, three dimensional type of uh, shape to help make it feel three dimensional. Um, ooh, let's add something. So let's pretend that there's a little little walkway that comes out and meets the road. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll add all that little walkway. And all around it is the snow is piled up. So maybe the person here went out and shoveled their walkway, right? Something like that. And uh, 
let's bring some more of that light hitting this and maybe some hitting the little walkway okay and make sure I cover cover the paper really cool you can see just using a few colors how you can get those contrasts to be working for you um, just make sure I cover that white paper reinforce that light I don't want to don't want to blend on top of that yellow because it'll turn green on me okay cool so let's come down to my other colors I picked out um, Bringing in some lighter browns here now to um, just to give a little bit more interest to these trees. But I'm going to kind of bring a little bit more color here. This is just a light, it's really like a light milk chocolate brown. Um, but here and there, we're going to cut in some light. Same back on that tree. Maybe it's sitting that branch up here, right there. Remember the light's coming through, so it's not gonna hit every part. It's gonna be in spots. Okay. So you figure out where you want your light spots to be. I'm kind of looking at this picture and I can kind of see them. They're just in random little spots here. So that's what I'm kind of going for there. Okay, so light coming through, it's gonna it's gonna hit part of that. Maybe up in there a little bit, some of those branches. Okay, we got, it's already got the house over here. Maybe even that right there. All right, now I'm gonna go to an even lighter. This is almost like an orange, like a pumpkin color. And we're gonna go lighter back here. Now this will change as we get into the painting, you know, it's going to change, but this is kind of how I do it. I just kind of indicate where I want things to be and then, then adjust as I get into the painting. Okay. And I can even go light and bring in this really bright, bright orange if I want to. Maybe we'll do that on some of these. Typically towards the, um, the front part, I'm going to bring it because I like the stronger color to be towards the foreground. Yeah. Okay, you can see how that's uh, beginning to shape up. And then back in here, we'll bring in some light. It'll be lighter. A little bit distant away, so it's a, the light's a little bit washed out back in there. Okay. <clears throat> Apologize again if sometimes uh, my shot goes out of frame. Here is you know I, I just work intuitively. Um, and sometimes I forget that I am filming myself. So apologize if some of my shots aren't in frame. Okay, just some more color here to the front. All right, and now we're gonna put some snow on these branches. So I'm gonna use this lavender here to indicate some, sh some snow on the branch here. There's gonna be snow coming up the tree trunks remember that lavender is good for snow that's in that's in shade so this is the shaded part of this tree so I'm just going to use a little of that lavender here kind of outline some of these darker branches with it. Any 
even on top of the um, the fence post and the rails. You want snow on top of that. All right. Now it doesn't really look like that now. I'm just using this one. Uh, this one lavender for that, but when we, we're going to add a gray on this and then it'll it'll make more sense. Okay. Back in here, there's some. All right. Now I'm not really looking at my reference picture. It's I kind of already got the idea. But every once in a while, I will just take a quick glance just to see what the snow looks like on those limbs. And then we're just back to putting that in. Okay. So maybe some more over here. All right. Now we're going to take those gray and see which gray. I'll, I think these are both the same. They might be a little different. Yeah, they're different. But let's take the lighter one. And we're going to take this gray and we're going to go right over the top of that lavender that I put down. And those two colors will mix and it'll give us a nice kind of a shaded snow on the branches look. Because the lavender by itself is just, it's too, it's too dark I think. It's just you gotta have a little bit of that white in the snow on top to make make to make it make sense. Um, so just carefully, kind of see how I'm doing that. I'm just kind of putting lines here with this gray on top of that lavender just in spots here just to show it down in the fence so there's the top of the fence post there it goes across there there's the top of the fence post goes across that rail goes across that rail and if I take my finger and just kind of do that we can kind of get some of that lavender back again top of that fence post there Top of the rail. Okay, and then take your finger and just kind of, kind of dull that a little bit so it's not so it doesn't punch so much. Maybe even something like that. A little bit more detail to the fence post itself. Okay, and this side. All right, and then uh, the snow kind of climbs up the tree trunk a little bit. Same on this one, same there. So I just put that gray on top of that lavender and then I take my finger and I just kind of change the value of it so it's not so bright. And that lavender underneath helps, helps dull that down a little for me. Now we're gonna go over this with the oil pastel. So I'm spending a lot of time here with these new pastels. Um, the more that I do with it, the less I'll have to do with the oil pastel. So I change that around. Sometimes I work a lot with these and sometimes it's very little. Um, I just like changing it up. Change 
changing it up. All right. So the most important thing is, is the value of the colors. It's, it's the most important aspect. Um, the, the actual color itself isn't, you know, I can make my snow pink, right? What's important is how the colors work together and how the values then work together. So you can see that my darkest, strongest values are here towards this front part and then things kind of fade back as you go back into the scene. So you have dark tree here, dark but not as dark as this one, and then lighter as you go back. Same over here, dark, lighter as you go back. Sharper details here in the foreground. And then um, this tree, I want to give it some more gnarly little branches. In fact, I think I'm going to come on this side and come up across here and kind of cut across the roof of this house a little bit to kind of add a little bit of interest there. Okay. A little snow on those branches. And then we'll cover that with that. So that combination of the lavender and then this light gray is working to get me some, get some snow here. All right, and then we have this snowy embankment here. We kind of do these little round, kind of round marks like this to indicate like heavy snow, right? Like it's kind of piling up. Okay, don't want to rub too much. I'm gonna kind of mess up these colors here. So I gotta just keep that loose. I haven't used white and no white has been used. Um, and I do that on purpose because once I go white, I can't get any brighter. That's it, that, that'll be my brightest. And so I don't wanna do that off the beginning because I wanna be able to adjust those values as I go through the painting. So I don't use white at the beginning and I don't use black either. Um, I find black to be too dark and white is just too light. So my lightest, lightest value here lightest color is this light gray and then this yellow and then my darkest is the blue brown these two and then I have a mid dark with the lavender and a mid dark with this middle gray and so kind of using a set of three values there to define um, this scene here so far all right So it's pretty good. It's a good rough draft. It's, it's it almost looks like a finished painting. Um, this, this little window here. Okay. And uh, let's see. Maybe a light there. Okay. We'll play around with the light. And it's going to change, but I think that's a good start. All right. All right, let's take it back, step back and take a look. All right. So pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and um, take a break here. I'm going to get a quick something to eat. It's been, this is we're now, what, 50 minutes into this, roughly 45, 50 minutes. So I got a good start. Kind of do some background tree stuff.
stuff back in here. Use this lavender for that distant stuff. So it's very loose. There's just no sharp details in that background. Or your sharpness is going to be up here. Sharp up front, very vague, very loose in the back. Okay. Forgot to put the snow on these branches here. So we'll just do that real quick. There's some snow, maybe some snow. Kind of coming off the side here. very loose and this will change make this will make several changes here as we continue on what I wish I think wish I could do is I wish I could listen to some music here but YouTube doesn't allow that <clears throat> and I want to be able to talk and kind of talk through my thinking here so you guys <clears throat> understand why I do certain things see an indication of a window or something Trying to get a really piled up snow look here. I don't really know what that looks like. I'm just kind of thinking what it might look like. Because this picture doesn't really, um, let's get back to my picture. Picture, where is my picture? There we go. It's hard to tell in the picture. It's just, there's just not enough detail, so. It's just kind of like washed out a little bit. All right, so I'll just kind of indicate big snow on the side of this house. Maybe there's even like indication of a, a plant that's kind of sticking up through that snow, you know? You only see the the top part of the, the sticks, you know, because it's all it's winter time, so all the foliage is gone, but you can only see the top part of that. So maybe that's kind of sticking up out of the snow. All right. So I keep picking at the light here. some light hits kind of comes across a road random little light shadow marks there I think we're good let's let's go ahead and stop you can see it gets dirty in my process but that's the fun part and you can see I, I did quite a bit with these new pastels. And you can see I only really used these colors here. Haven't even touched that pink. I'm not sure if I'm going to bring pink into it now. Um, but you can see how much of a scene you can create with just a few sticks. Okay, so now I'm going to clean my hands. And I like these wipes for that. They do a good job cutting through pigment and they're alcohol based so they do a good job with cutting through the oil pastel and get your hands nice and clean and disinfected all at the same time 
<laughs> All right, let's get another one. All right, clean hands. I'm gonna go eat here in a second, so I'm gonna make sure I don't have any color. There, we'll put that back. Try to save those and reuse them. Okay, so next step here is you take a workable fixative. Let me get my workable fixative. And again, I like to use this Krylon workable. And I will take this outside and I will spray the entire surface. And um, when I spray, it's basically I'm doing, you know, back and forth, up and down and kind of all over. And I do it from about, you know, try to like, you know, maybe eight to 10 inches away from the surface and get a good coverage. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna get something to eat and then we'll be back. All right.